So this here is la, simply la. So it's quite short. Now I'm going to rewrite this. So this is written with a lam with a fata, and we've added the alif to it. So now we've got lam alif, and this is known as a long vowel, or it makes the a sound too long. And we'll cover this in a lesson in um, late, a later lesson where we'll concentrate on the long sounds. However, for now, if you just remember, this is actually too long. So we have on the right hand side we have la and on the left hand side we have la the first one being one long and the second one being too long now in grammar the single length la is used for affirmation i.e. to affirm something and the two length la is used as absolute negation so when you say la it means absolutely not and when you say la, it means effectively there is. So if you say your shahada and you say la ilaha, so you make the first la one long, you are saying there is a God other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have to be very careful. What you should be saying is la ilaha because you're doing absolute negation. There is no God other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you can see here just by getting your lengths wrong in your shahada you could be effectively saying the opposite of what you should be saying. So this is why lengths are very very important and the la and the la in your tajweed is very very important because most of the sentences they're used for are either affirmations or absolute negations. Length of short vowels with lam. So we're going to do an example of all the short vowels again just with the letter lam. So here we have fatah and we get the sound la, la. Here we have lam with the kasra giving the sound li li remember to smile and we have the lamb with the dhamma which gives the sound lu lu and remember all of these are one long so we have la li lu we do not want to say la li lu that's too long short vowels i your fat ha kasra and dhamma must be kept to one length long la li lu and this is all relative to how you actually recite or sing your quran but you must keep it relatively one long when compared to the longer sounds alif and hamza one thing to remember is that the alif never has a short sound on it, but Hamza does. So here's the alphabet alif. Now one must be careful in the actual Quran. This is used as a long vowel, so it helps to lengthen the a ah sound from one long to two long. It does not function as a consonant on its own. The one you will see is the Hamza sitting on top of the Alif. So here we have Hamza on an Alif with Fatha, Hamza on an Alif with a Kasra, and Hamza on an Alif with the Dhamma. So you will never see the short markings, i.e. the short vowel markings, on top of an Alif. When you see them on top of this Alif sign, it will always be a Hamza. Now in the Uthmani script they will show you these small Hamzas when they're there, I when they're, it's actually a Hamza. In the Majidi script sometimes they drop the little Hamza sitting on the Alif but they keep the Alif sign itself so it ends up looking like the long vowel Alif but they will still be Hamzas and we'll do a detailed analysis of the Majidi 
versus the Uthmani script towards the end of our webinars or the end of our Tajweed course so you need to be a bit patient with that but just be aware in proper Tajweed technical terms the long vowel Alif can never have short vowel sounds on them because itself is being used as a long vowel to lengthen the, set, the length of generally the fatha sound so these hamzas with the fatha kasra and dhamma give the sounds a e u a e u and this is hamza on its own so this is a a now for this example we've drawn the little hamza above the alif when it carries a kasra and that's just to get you used to hamza sitting on an alif in we'll see later on when we do this in more detail this little hamza will switch and it will be underneath the alif so normally when you have the hamza and alif with a kasra underneath it the hamza will move to the bottom of the alif so we've just drawn it here just to keep things simple at the moment so in correctly written letters this hamza will be at the bottom when you have the kasra on it the hamza will be on top of the alif if it carries a fatha or a dhamma when you have the hamza on its own it can have the fatha kasra or dhamma on it so we've just drawn one example here giving a so again these are all hamza a final note on the short vowel fatha in this lesson we have only introduced the short vowel sound so we haven't really done a proper analysis of those short vowel sounds on every alphabet we've only just touched on it so it's just an introduction to get you used to what the short vowel sounds are in the future lessons dealing only with fatha so we're going to have some lessons that are very in depth on the pronunciation of fatha with other alphabet and how it is applied to each alphabet we will see that it can give slightly different sounds than a ah to letters so this is one thing to be aware of when you're putting the fatha on top of alphabets the sound will actually not always be an a ah sound and we'll cover that in the lessons um, later on and it's something to do with what we call tafkhim and tarqiq which is fattening and thinning of some of the alphabet letters and their sounds so in conclusion we have learnt what fatha, kasra and dhamma are and how they function we know the importance of pronouncing the short vowels with the correct sound length in future lessons we will learn how to pronounce the entire alphabet with each short vowel